Hello, this is Mr. Hennon, and you are at the Institute. Uh, today, what we're going to do is I'm going to try to explain how to take data and put it into Google Slides and use that, or not Google Slides, but Google Sheets, and use that to create a graph. Specifically, we're going to do this as we do all of our uh, calculations and all of our different experiments throughout the year. So what I did is I just kind of looked up some random data, and I found some data on the average air temperature versus the latitude of um, that particular place on the Earth. So I'm actually just going degrees north. So I'm starting at the equator and heading north to the North Pole was the way I did it. So here's my data. The first thing I need to do is actually get into Google Sheets. So I'm going to just add another tab, click on Google, and then go up here to these the waffle, as people always say, but it should have all your apps. You're going to look for Sheets. I'm going to open up that one. Now, Google Sheets has the ability to create spreadsheets. So I'm just going to create a blank one here just to make it a little bit easier on myself. And this is what it kind of looks like. Anytime you do a Google Doc or a Google Sheets or a Google Slides or anything, I highly suggest that you name it. So give it some kind of name up here where it says Untitled Spreadsheet. I'm just going to say this is my um, latitude versus temp. So I gave it a name. Then right here, I'm going to put the data in that I just saw. Um, sometimes you can kind of copy and paste it, but if you can't, I'm just going to go ahead and type it. So I'm going to put in latitude. And I highly suggest you put the unit with the title. So always have a title and put the unit with it. Also, I would double click in between this A and B so you can make it as big as it you want, or you can drag this over and make it as big as you want. But if you double click it, they'll make it the maximum size here. So my latitudes go from 0, 20, 40, 60, 80, and then finally 90. So there's my numbers. Next up, I have my air temp. And this was in degrees Celsius. Now, even though it looks like it spread over to the C, it didn't. It actually is still in B. So if I come between B and C, I double click. It's going to make that as wide as possible. And then I just put in my numbers. So I've got 27, 19, 12, 27, 19, 12. And then my next number is negative 9, negative 25, negative 36. So negative 9, negative 25, negative 36. Make sure that's my data. Yep, that's my data. So now I've got a Greek created. You can also doctor this up in Google Sheets if you want to. So if you highlight everything, for example, um, you can come up here where it looks like you have, you can put in borders. So if you want borders around everything, that's always nice. I'm also a big fan sometimes of centering everything so it looks a little bit nicer. So those are things you can do. You don't have to, but it allows you to do some of those. So play around with the tools. The main thing I want you to be able to do is graph that data. So to graph the data, you're actually going to highlight all the data. And you're going to come up to either insert or if you can find it, sometimes there is it underneath these dots, there'll be a little picture that kind of looks like a bar graph. They'll actually refer to this as a chart. I refer to them as graphs, but you can do it either way. I always like to go to insert, and you're going to insert a chart. So you click on that. It's going to take a guess as to what kind of chart. This one created a line chart. That is incorrect. I do not want a line chart. Most people think I do because I want to create a line with it, but I don't. I actually want a scatter chart. So we click here where it says chart type, and you're going to scroll down until you find where it says scatter, and you want this little section that has little dots on it. So click on that. There's my data. So I'm going to grab that and move it. I always like to move it so it's out of the way. Now, if you put titles and everything on your data table, it will automatically title everything. It'll put a title up here. It'll title the sides. Whatever's in the first column will be the X. Whatever's in the second column will be the Y. It'll even put units, and I love that. If it didn't do that, let's say you forgot to put it in here, 
underneath the word um, customize, you have a place where you can put in charts and axes titles. So you click on that. And so it's got here for title text and you can type that in. And then where it says chart title, if you click on that, you can pick the horizontal axis and you can put that in. You just literally type on there and you can change it. So if I wanted to uh, change this, so I said, oh, my vertical is not supposed to be air temperature. It's just supposed to be um, temperature. So I'll get rid of the word air and then put that in there. And the cool part is the minute I change it here, it's going to change it on my graph. Now, if you happen to accidentally click off, you can always come onto your graph. Just click on it. Go to these three little dots in the corner, and it'll give you the ability to edit the chart. So you click edit, and it'll bring up this chart editor. You always want that. So the next step is I have to go over here to customize. And I've got everything except that there's something missing. I want to draw the best fit line through there. I want to draw what we call a trend line. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to where it says series. And we're going to scroll down. And if you scroll down, you're going to find this little place that says trend line that has a little place to put a check mark. I'm going to put a check mark right there. And it's going to draw a linear trend line through that data. By, once I put a check mark, more stuff pops up. So the type is linear. I can pick all kinds of them. So maybe I think it's exponential. Maybe I think it's logarithmic. Maybe I think it's a power series. The most common ones we're going to do is linear or polynomial. Those will probably be the most common ones, but most of the time we're going to do linear, and that's the default. The next step is it seems like, oh, yeah, that's great. I'm done. I've drawn the best fit line. That's not actually the case. There's one more thing I want you to do. Down here where it says label, the default is to put no label on here. I don't actually want that to be what you want. So I want you to click over here where it's at the end of where it says label. And what I want us to always do is put use equation. What that's going to do is that's going to put up here that air temperature is equal to, and it's going to give us in y equal mx plus b format. So air temperature is my y. This negative 0.713 would be the slope of this. X is my latitude. And then plus 32.5 is my y-intercept. So if those things mean anything to us, the slope often does. It doesn't actually show up, but the slope does actually have a unit. It would be the unit for the y divided by the unit for the x. So in this case, it would be degrees Celsius per degree. So it, would, it tells me that we're decreasing almost one degree Celsius for every degree um, latitude. It's not quite. It's actually 0.713 for the temperature. Sometimes people like to show this R squared value. And I'll put a check mark and show you. And then it'll show us the equation. Then I'll have R squared equal a number. The R squared is just a way of representing the error. So if I wanted to see how much error there was in this thing, um, it would show me that. For this, I don't need it, so I'm going to uncheck it and just leave it like that. Now I have my data. I have my data table. I'm good. A lot of times we want to put this graph into our document. So if I click back on the graph and I go to these three little dots, you'll notice there's one that says copy the chart. So I'm going to click copy chart. I'm going to come back to my original data table or my original document, and then I'm just going to come up here where it says edit. I'm going to paste it. And it's going to give us some ideas. Do I want to link it to the spreadsheet or do I want to paste it unlinked? If you link it to the spreadsheet, what that means is when you change the data on the spreadsheet, it'll automatically change it in your document. I highly suggest if you're doing everything with Google, this is a good thing to do. So if you're taking it from Google Sheets and putting it into Google Docs, that's a great thing to do. If you were taking it from Google Sheets and putting it into, say, Microsoft Word, I would not do that because they don't really talk to each other well, and you're probably not going to be uh, connecting to it. Or if you're going to be giving this document to somebody else, um, so you're going to be sharing it, I wouldn't bother with that because you probably want the data at that particular point. So I personally, either one of these is per perfectly fine. Most people will just hit paste right away. Uh, if you unlink it, all it's going to do is really just copy the way it looks. So I'm going to go ahead and link it to the spreadsheet and click paste. And ta-da, there is my graph. I can change it. So if I click the center, that allows me to move it over data. Um, I can move it around. I can make it a little bit smaller. 
I can make it bigger, whatever I need to do to kind of get it ready. The cool part is it keeps that equation in there, so I still have my slope. It's got the title. It's got everything labeled. There's my picture, and we are set. And that is how you are going to create a graph using Google Sheets. I hope you enjoyed this edition of the Institute.